Hello, in this quick video we are going to work through this warm question from class and we're going to write a program that has a predefined list of integers. You can put whatever you want in there. We're going to print out all the elements using a counted loop and then we're going to print them all out using a conditional loop. Now again, the reason why we do this with both a counted and a conditional loop is that depending on what you're doing, using one loop or the other might make things a little easier. But it's important to know that these loops are completely interchangeable. So let's start off by making a list, and we're just going to put a bunch of numbers in here. There it is. So this is a list that has, right now, a length of, and we just count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And therefore, we know it has the index values from, oops, let me, indexes is 0 to 7. And this is an important idea with lists and with strings is that, the indexes are always 0 to 1 minus the length. So using a counted loop, I'm going to use that 4i in range structure, and we have that count check change. So we're going to start at 0 because the first index is 0, and now we're going to take the length of LST. So by taking the length of the list, it's going to put the length in there, and this loop is going to continue as long as i is less than the length of the list. We're going to increment by 1 each time, and I print LST at i. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the loop counter, that is i, to go through every index in that list. So now if we just give this a whirl, octope, 12, and we call this loop, and it's called loop list, pi, notice we get every value. And again, what's really important here is actually having Python calculate the length for us. Because if someone comes along and adds some more numbers to the list, I don't have to modify the loop at all because we're actually calculating the length of the list when we reach this loop structure. Now, this is one way to do it, but I also want you to be familiar how to do this with a conditional loop, and that is a while loop. So with a conditional loop, we're going to set i equal to 0, which is the first index of every list. And we're going to say while i is less than lst, sorry, length of lst. So we're having Python calculate the length of lst, and then as long as i is less than the length, we're going to do something. What are we going to do? We're going to print lst at i. So now, if I run this, I'm going to have a problem. And let's just run it quickly to see. Notice it's looping forever, and that's because i is 0, is 0 less than whatever this length is, and let's just set it to 8 there. And it's true, so we print out list at 0, but we haven't actually applied that change. So I have to come here and add something, and that is that change I want to apply. So let's just break this. There it goes. Clear the screen up. So I'm going to say i is equal to i plus 1. And now when I run this, oops, pardon me, there it is. So these work exactly the same, but it's really important to start familiarizing yourself with both of these structures because, again, depending on the situation, a different loop structure can make things a little easier. Now, just as a little quick note at the end here, a lot of students when they're learning Python is they pull up these shorthand notations. And so, for example, you can do this. for elements in LST, and we're going to print elements. This is one you'll often see people use. So if I run this, notice it does it perfectly. This is a for each loop, and it's just shortened it even more. And this is how we can say for every element in LST, run this code. Very useful for a shorthand, but again, if you start using these too early, in my opinion, you don't appreciate the subtleties that come with this counted and conditional loop structure. With that, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.